Hello and welcome back. In this session, I'm going to show you how uh, to add detail on the fly to your objects. Um, this is going to be only one of several different ways that we're going to add detail in the future, uh, but it's the one that we're going to start with because it's one of the simpler ones to understand. Um, so, in previous sessions, what we've done is to add detail to an object using its inputs. So here the inputs can establish the width, the height, depth, and the subdivisions in this simple cube. Okay. Now that is a fine way to start an object with an appropriate size and appropriate uh, starting divisions, but it's not really how we work uh, typically because it's very difficult to plan past a very um, a very low detail stage. And at that point we need to start instantiating detail as we go on a need-by-need -need basis and in fact deleting detail as well. Um, so in this case I'm going to insert an edge loop around this cube um, using an insert edge loop function. Okay, um, You'll remember that I said that the control and shift keys were going to be important and uh, this is one of the times when it is going to be important. Okay, so our primary shortcut is going to be holding down shift and holding down right click to access a radial menu like this one here. This is not the actual menu we're going to be using because we can access different radial menus depending on context. So in this context I have held down shift and right click over an object with no component mode selected and I get these commands and these menus. Okay, um, If I had a component mode selected such as edge or vertex then I would get a different contextual radial menu. Um, another thing to note about this radial menu is that I've got this central axis point here and you can see this sort of radian extend out. Um, that is how you make your selections but um, if one of the selections has a small arrow facing to the right such as merge at the top there, um, when I hover over that it takes me to another sub menu with other selections and if I want to go back I have to hover my mouse back over the original um, dot. Okay, So I can go to split and go back to the typical menu. You saw that it kind of extended itself to the right that time. Um, and sometimes there are several of these, although I'm not seeing them in this context. Let's see. Can I get several? No, down here I can't. Okay, uh, But just so you know, that is how you navigate that menu. And it is when you release the mouse key that it will actually make its selection. So let's just say insert um, edge loop tools right here um, conveniently, although that's not where I'm going to get it. And now I've got the tool selected. Okay. So to get access to the menu that we want, what you're going to want to do is first go into edge mode for your object. Uh, and you can select an edge. Any edge will do. Um, just select an edge and you're guaranteed to get the correct menu. Okay. Uh, and this menu is filled with tools and commands. Uh, sometimes it's important which edges you have selected, sometimes it's not. In this case I'm going to access a tool and so it didn't really matter which edge I selected anyway. Okay. Um, but here I am in this radial contextual menu for edges and down this main menu you can see there's an insert edge loop tool. Okay, So I'm going to release my mouse button while hovering over that and it gives me a little command on the screen. It says click drag on edges. Okay, So I'm going to left click and drag along this edge and you can see that it places a edge loop for me. Now actually mine's not moving right now because I previously tried this out and I have some settings already turned on for this object. If you'll remember these three buttons in the upper right hand corner of the interface, they are the channel box, the tool settings, which is what we're going to use, and the attribute editor. So go ahead and make sure you have the tool settings um, open. Let me just undo that command. Uh, and you can always reset tool here in case your settings have already been changed to something else. Okay. With the default settings, when I click and drag, this edge will slide along this edge that I've selected. Um, and whenever I release the mouse button, it will create a new loop. And so now that's a loop that goes all the way around the object. Um, and if I did it on one of these edges, it would go the opposite way and do a loop around the entire object. Okay. This command is uh, very, very helpful and convenient, but it is also intended to go all the way around a path um, looping around the object. Um, and there are some cases where that is not possible and so using this tool will be illegal, it just won't work. Um, and there are some cases where it will not reach the entire distance and will only go partial ways. Um, that is a um, sort of lesson for another day, but just know that if you're not able to use this tool, 
on a particular part of your geometry, um, the reason is because it cannot create an established loop and you need to find a different way to instantiate that detail. Um, in general, if the detail is gridded, as in everything runs 90 degrees um, perpendicular to each other, then a loop should be able to be established um, and you should be able to use the edge loop tool. Okay. In this tool settings panel, we've got a few relevant uh, options for using this tool. The first thing, uh, this maintained position area, we've got relative, relative distance, equal distance, and multiple edge loops. Um, as far as I know, the distance, uh, there's no difference between relative and equal distance settings. Um, this one sounds like what it's going to do is evenly split the difference between um, how long the edge is, but it doesn't do that. Instead, to get that effect, you have to use multiple edge loops down here with this equal modifier turned on. Um, so what this one will do is right now it's set to two. So if I click and hold, um, it will place two evenly spaced edge loops and I have no choice as to where to put them. Okay. If I turn this equal modifier off, it will instantiate two. Actually, you know what? That one should have allowed me to slide it, but now it didn't. Uh, strange things. I don't know why that isn't working, but I usually just leave this one on. Uh, if you want one edge loop to equally split difference, you can change this down to one and then you can see that pops down right in the center, uh, mathematically even, which is a very convenient way to use that tool. And for now, just don't worry about the rest of these options down here. These are the very important ones to just learn to use this tool initially. So this can be a very helpful, quick way to instantiate some detail on a model. Um, and we're going to do a little example um, of making a barrel to show you how we can uh, use this insert edge loop tool um, to full advantage. And it's actually going to show us a few more uh, commands as well as we go. Um, the last thing I would show you though before we go to that is how to get rid of detail um, without undoing of course. Uh, if you do put in a edge loop and you don't like it, you can always just undo and the edge loop will go away. But let's say that I'm several moves down the line and I just decide that I don't want this edge loop anymore. Okay, I want to keep that one but I don't want this one. What we have to do is select that edge loop and then we have to use a command to get rid of it. Um, you want to, in general cases, avoid using delete or backspace to delete things uh, because what will happen is you won't always get all of the detail to remove itself from the model. Um, sometimes vertices will be left over or edges will be left over, but you won't be able to see them and it will create bad um, geometry. Okay, So in this case, like if I hit delete there on that edge, you can see that, wait a minute, this edge still terminates there, and so does that one. But this appears to be one face. Okay, It is one face, but those vertices are left over. Now, if, even if I go and delete this edge, there is still a vertex there in the middle of this uninterrupted edge, which is no good. Now, I can fix that by hand if I go and then additionally delete this vertex. Now that's one continuous edge. Then I would have to go over here, delete that edge, delete this vertex, and now I'm back to a four-sided face here. But that was a hassle and also messy and also dangerous because you may just forget something, you may miss something, um, and then you're going to have bad geometry, uh, maybe an inability to render uh, correctly or to bring it into a game engine. Okay, So I'm undoing back to before I did any of that. Uh, instead, we do have tools uh, in the same menus that will allow us to delete information. Um, so I've got this edge loop going around here. And what you want to do when you're selecting an edge loop is to just double click one of the edges that runs in the direction that you want. So this one will do just fine, just double click. And you can see that it goes all the way around the object. Now what you might be noticing um, is a common uh, glitch in Maya as far as the display goes where these edges right here look like they are selected. They're not. Okay, I'll prove it to you by moving. And you can see those edges there are not moving around. It's these edges that I've got selected. Okay, um, that happens uh, fairly often. And if it's happening to you and you find it annoying, um, the way to um, get it to reset itself and display correctly is to enter into whatever component mode is displayed incorrectly. In this case, edges are displayed incorrectly. So you go to edge mode and then just encircle the entire object and deselect. And once you do that, it will reset the display of all the edges and now you should be able to correctly see and display um, the edges that you have selected. But 
Um, oftentimes I power right through it and don't even notice because it's been happening so long um, that I'm used to the effect by now, okay? So I double clicked that edge and got this edge loop selected and now I want to delete those edges. So I can shift right click and we've got this command delete edge. So this will delete the edges and the vertices. Boom, there they go. And if I check by grabbing vertex mode, you can see that there are no remaining vertexes in that, in that region. I've cleanly um, eliminated those edges. So I'll do it over here. Delete edge, there we go. And if you do it on a region that has detail like this one right here, delete edge, it will actually get rid of faces as well. So just be aware of that. Um, that can be a, um, an effect that you want, or sometimes it can be an undesired effect, and uh, sometimes it can result in some very ugly geometry. So use that sparingly, please. Um, try not to use that as a primary me uh, method of modeling, at least for now, uh, until we get used to um, combining vertices and um, deleting things and reshaping things responsibly, okay? So let's move on to our barrel example. I'm gonna start with just a polygon primitive cylinder and I'm gonna use the inputs for the initial shaping and that's about it, okay? So I'm gonna click on the poly cylinder one inputs in the channel box and I'll set this to a height of three and a radius of one. Those will be the proportions I'm gonna use. And since it's three tall, I should be able to move it up one and a half and it sits right there on the grid, okay, as if that were the ground. Cool, so that's all I'm gonna use with those inputs. Uh, the rest of it's going to be inserting edge loops. So now I'm gonna grab an edge, hold down shift and right click to get my menu, and I'm gonna choose insert edge loop tool. Now what I want are a couple edges coming up the length of this barrel so that I can make it fat. Fat like a, um, the, the most in the middle and then sort of, uh, taper towards the tops and the bottoms there. Um, so I want three equal edge loops here. So I'm gonna use this multiple edge loop setting. Um, and the limit to this tool, by the way, is 10. It won't let you insert more than 10. Uh, if you want to insert more edge loops than 10, then you're gonna to have to figure out some way to divide it, um, especially if they're even edge loops. So for instance, we could do um, two edge loops initially followed by four. So I've got four, five, oops, there we go, nine, 10, 14 evenly spaced divisions going up there, not counting the cap in the bottom, which would be uh, 15, 16, going up and down that um, cylinder. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of math if you want more than 10 evenly spaced divisions, but I don't often find that I have a great need to do something like that all at one time. So it shouldn't come up too often. Um, so what I want now for this barrel, I want a edge loop right in the middle and I want one on the upper quarter and the lower quarter. And there's a couple ways that we could do that. I could set this down to one, click here, click here, click here, and I got one at 50%, 25%, and 75%. Okay, easy enough. Or, of course, I could set this to three. At three, 25%, 50%, 75%, all done for me simultaneously. So that's nice, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, now I want to fatten out this barrel in the same way that we were um, using a uniform scale to uh, create our Coke bottles and water bottles and things last time. Um, so I'm gonna select this edge loop um, you can do it the same way you did last time if you like, vertex mode and just dragging a selection through and checking it. Or, since now we know, uh, we can just double click an edge and get an edge loop that we can scale uniformly to change the silhouette of the object. I'm going to hop into my orthographic front view just so I can get a reliable comparison. Scale that out and I'm gonna grab both of these together so that they will be the exact same size and I'm gonna uniformly scale them out as well. And you could even shift them up and down by using vertical scale if you'd like. Uh, but I'm gonna leave them uh, approximately where they were. So this is a, a fairly nice silhouette, okay? We'll come back into the perspective view and take a look at it, but you may see that it leaves something to be desired, okay? Um, this effect here where we've got this, what should be a curving line and instead we can see these jagged corners is called low tessellation. 
this object does not have enough detail currently to support this idea of a sweeping line and it just kind of looks ugly. Uh, if we zoom back far enough, like about here, you can't see the effect anymore and so that can um, come into concepts of efficiency. If this barrel was only going to be seen from very far away, that would be a very good amount of tessellation for it. But we want something a little bit better and we want to instantiate some detail to help support that. Now there's a couple ways we can go about getting that detail. I'm going to use edge loops first to show that we could do that. Um, so I'm going to insert edge loops, just one this time, evenly spaced, and I'll put one here, 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 and here. And you'll see that although I have more detail, that detail is not going to follow the contours or the, the uh, prescribed contours of the object yet. It's just right in between those two edges mathematically. And so if we deselect, the problem's not gone yet. Okay, But we have more detail to help tackle that problem now. So I'm going to go back into my front view and double click them one at a time. Or I could do pairs since I know these two are the same. But I'll just do them one at a time uh, since I'm going to undo the work anyway. And then just scale them out uniformly, carefully. And this one, so it's every other one. And it gives me a fairly nice result. Okay, I've got what looks like a much smoother barrel now, and that's going to work just fine. Uh, but it was a little bit clumsy, a little bit inaccurate, and there's a better way to do it, and using a different tool. So I'm going to undo back to where all of those details go away. Um, by the way, if I haven't mentioned it yet, the inputs here are a running log of all of the commands that you've run on your object. And so as I undo, watch that channel box and you'll see that those commands start disappearing. Here we've got four um, split ring, three split ring, two split ring, there we go. So we're back to cylinder and the split ring which gave me all three of these. Uh, if you're ever not sure if you've undone far enough back before you did a specific command, you can watch that. Um, list of inputs just to be absolutely sure. So I want more detail on this barrel but I want it to be completely even and I actually want it kind of centered around these initial lines. That's why I put them at 50 percent, 25 percent and so on. And so we're going to use a um, second command this time. I'm going to select all three edge rings and if sometimes double clicking uh, these manipulators get in your way just hit Q because that uh, is just a selection tool. It has no manipulator. Um, then you can double click more easily. So I'm going to double click this line, hold down shift, double click this line, hold down shift, double click this line. As soon as it highlights, there it is. Double click. Um, and we're going to hold down shift and right click and choose bevel edge this time. Okay. Bevel edge has uh, numerous settings down here which we'll go over in more detail uh, later on. But what it does is it splits each one of those edge into two edges. Okay, so in this case, that adds much needed uh, detail to the um, curvature of my barrel and allows me to um, very easily in one command instead of several get that nice effect that I was looking for. Okay, um, so let me show you just a little bit of bevel edge. Since I haven't done anything else to this barrel, this final input here is, is still tweakable. Um, so down here you can see that offset, um, if I hold if I click the word and then hold down middle mouse button to drag left and right, you can see offset is how far away um, from the original edge those two new edges um, instantiate themselves. And it's a percentage, 0%, um, so it's right on top of the original edge, um, which could be problematic, so I don't recommend doing that necessarily, or 100% is as far away as that they could manage to get away. Uh, and then 0.5 is you know evenly spaced, 50%. Uh, then the number of divisions or segments. Uh, if you change it to two, you'll leave one piece of detail where the original was and then get two neighbors um, down to one and you'll just get a split and so on and so on. Okay, So that could be very helpful. Um, for the rest of them, don't worry about it for now. That's Those are the two really important parts to know uh, for the outset. Okay, So now I've got my overall barrel shape and what I want are two steel bands towards the top and towards the bottom to give it um, that sense of being constructed like it's being held together like a true barrel or cask would be. Okay, um, I am going to build this out of one composite piece which is not what we've done in the past. 
um, what we've done in the past is to create uh, a primitive cylinder, let's say. Move it into position, just wide enough and short enough. Let's see, is that short enough? Nope. Something like this. And then probably as a final step, I would grab this edge loop and make it wider. So it contoured to the barrel. And there we go, we've got our detail in two pieces. So I've got one piece, which is the band, and one piece, which is the wood. That is fine for some applications, but it's going to be useful to know how to build composite pieces um, for more complicated applications now. So in some cases, whereas that would be perfectly appropriate, we're just not gonna do it that way this time for the sake of demonstration. So I'm gonna delete that. Um, I want these two bands to appear approximately on the upper half of this um, ring of faces and the lower half of this ring of faces equally. So I'm gonna insert one more edge loop going around um, so I can get faces to start with. So insert edge loop, multiple edges evenly, one here and here. So I've got these faces or this face ring here and here which is going to be the place where my steel band goes, okay? So that brings me to our next command. We are going to extrude the faces so that they are um, directly coming out of the original uh, polygon mesh um, and they are continuously attached to it, okay? So that's gonna help us to make this all one piece. Um, first, we need to get a selection of those face rings. Now, much like edge rings, we can get face paths um, or face path rings. I forget what the terminology is, but it's not using the same method because if I just double click this face, um, it doesn't know which way to go. It just selects all contiguous faces, which are the attached ones, um, and that's not gonna help us. So, if you select a face, and I'll just hit Q so that my manipulator goes away. Select a face, and then hold down shift and double click a neighbor face, it will choose that direction to select a loop of faces in, okay? And I can do that again down here, holding shift to select this face, holding shift still and double clicking and I get a continuous selection of faces. If you can't make that work correctly, just know that you can still make a slice selection like that. Or if you wanna be very, very careful, you can come into an orthographic view and make a slice selection there. Okay, all of those methods are equally valid. Not, none of them is going to cause a problem or anything. It's down to preference. So I've got those faces selected and I'm going to want to activate my extrude face tool. It's the same menu that we used for our insert edge loops, only now it's gonna be contextual to faces because that's what we have selected. So hold down shift and right click and now here's our face menu and extrude face exists at the bottom. So release the mouse button when hovering over that and don't hit any more keys, okay? Your manipulator is gonna look slightly different and it might be a little bit confusing, but these are, um, this is now a manipulator which is contextual to the extrude face command that we just ran. Um, what's going on here is that the manipulator is in its um, normal space um, for that, that face right now. Um, normal space is a um, space that extrudes directly out from the face, so in a perpendicular angle from the face as it sits on the, on, on the mesh. So you can see this kind of angles upward into the air because that face is kind of leaned back. And if I move this face by dragging that arrow, you'll see that all the faces move along their respective normal angles. So whatever perpendicular line extends straight out from that face, that's the direction that they are all moving right now. Don't hit any of your manipulator keys. Don't hit Q, W, E, or R. If you happen to do that, go back before you ran the command and run it again to see this effect, okay? Um, but you need this manipulator uninterrupted with these words floating here in order to see this effect. Now the other angles are actually gonna mess it up, right? Because the normal angle doesn't really conform to an even uh, an even spacing this way or that way. It's only this normal direction, the Z direction here, um, that it's going to be helpful in. If you do hit a manipulator tool, like W, 
Now it's going to treat this as if it were world space, and that's what we're used to already. So sometimes you want that uh, manipulator and sometimes you don't. So I'm gonna uh, undo. You can see poly extrude face still exists here, so I'm gonna undo again. Poly extrude face disappeared, so now I'm back to just having a selection of faces, okay? So I'm gonna run the command again, extrude face. And now we're gonna mess around with these words over on the side here. So remember, you can left click and drag these words to affect them. And if they're moving too quickly, hold down control as you drag those and they will drag more slowly, or hold down shift to drag them and they will drag more quickly, okay? And you can undo those as well. So I'm gonna use control and click and drag this word thickness until I get the appropriate distance away from the barrel. Um, and in this context, offset will make this band thinner or wider in the extrude direction, uh, which is unnecessary at this point, so I'm not gonna do it. And as you might be able to guess, divisions would put additional edge loops along the distance of the extrusion. So that's just the sides there. And that's what was extruded out from the object, okay? So we don't need any of that. We just need a little bit of thickness so that we get these bands moving out along the barrel like that. And that looks pretty nice, okay? We can continue using this command on the caps because I would like a little bit of a lip of the wood um, followed by a sink down to where the caps would be hammered into place on the top and bottom. Okay. Um, if we were trying to insert an edge loop on this cap, it wouldn't work because there is no smooth path um, in a grid formation here. So insert edge loop tool, if I click, you can see it just can't do it. Okay, because all of these vertexes on the left hand side of all of these faces going around are the same vertex, it can't find a path. It can do it down here because that is a grid. Okay, but not up here where there are wedges or triangles. All right, so instead, if we need additional detail on a cap like this, what we can do is select the faces. So I'm going to make a selection straight down this object. Whoop, looks like we've got that error again. So I'm just going to select everything, deselect, and then I'll make my selection on the cap one more time. So straight down through, and I'll double check to see if I got what I wanted to. Ooh, it looks like I missed a little bit there. Um, so I'll go ahead and make a, another selection, let's see, just like that. There we go. Okay, so that's what I wanted selected, the top and the bottom, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and extrude, extrude face. Okay, so I would like a um, secondary ring on the inside of this cap, so I'm just going to use offset instead of thickness this time to slide that detail inward, okay? And that's all I want. This little face is gonna sit right where it is, and I wanna have these faces um, just scooched inward a little bit so we can use that as an additional starting place, okay? Now I'm gonna run extrude again, okay? So two times in a row, one to scoot this stuff in, and I'm gonna hit G to run this again, okay? G will repeat your last command. And this time, I'm gonna use thickness, to slide these new faces downward, okay? I'm using control a lot right now because these are very minute. Um, and I'll even give it a little bit of offset to make it slightly wider so that these panels are kind of following the outward um, sweeping angles there, okay? And since I haven't been hitting my manipulator keys, I've just been using these inputs for the extrude, everything that I'm doing down there is happening in the tangent space um, up here as well, so they look exactly the same. Okay, very, very convenient to model symmetrically like that when you can. Um, if you can't, it's okay. You can always do things more than once, but in this case, the barrel is very symmetrical, and so this ends up being very convenient, okay? So those were a couple tools that you can use to get uh, additional detail in your models, both insert edge loops and extrude, as well as bevel, um, and you're going to be using those to make three simple objects this week for your homework. Um, and I want them to be three simple objects, as in they should resemble um, primitives like this barrel does. Um, with the exception of a few small changes, this barrel is essentially a cylinder. So you want to think about cubic shaped objects, cylindrical shaped objects, spherical shaped objects, with these additional details and embellishments added onto them um, so that you can 
um, practice these tools, get comfortable with these tools as we move forward to more and more detailed objects. Now remember, it is still okay to add additional objects. You don't have to make everything out of one piece. For instance, barrels oftentimes have like a little cork sitting in the side of them. So if I made a cylinder, for instance, and rotated it on its side, let's make it 90 degrees, sized it down, and that can be the little cork sitting in the side of the barrel. That's perfectly acceptable. Okay, I want to see some component modeling, but it doesn't have to all be component modeling. In this case, for um, this cork, what I might do to make it a little bit nicer is to um, expand out this side a little bit so it's got kind of a truncated angle to it, and then maybe just bevel this edge a little bit, and I'll turn the number down so that it's very subtle. And there I've got a cork which has more detail to it and looks a little bit more fun, but is also itself a very primitive shape um, that uh, aligns with our, our modeling ability at this point. Okay, So I want three simple objects on a theme. And just pick any old theme that you think is going to be fun, but you want to avoid objects which twist and bend and have very organic shapes because that's going to be too difficult for you. Um, so. Um, old, you know, piratey weapons, you know, this would go great with like a cannon um, and maybe, I guess you got, you could probably handle something like a, a, a candle stick or a, an oil lamp or uh, maybe even a cutlass or something like that. That would be a little bit more challenging, but those types of things would be fine. Um, what you wouldn't want to do is like sails or the coiled rope. Um, or anything living, of course, like a parrot or something. That's going to be way beyond you. No skulls. You know, skulls are going to be way too hard at this point. Um, or you could pick like a medieval theme. You could pick a modern theme, you know, make like a stop sign, a bus stop, you know, that sort of thing. Three objects on a theme using these commands. And uh, that's going to be it for this week. I suppose the only extra thing that I didn't show you guys how to do was how to delete faces. Um, so let me go through that really quick. I'll just make a um, simple bowl for you, just to show you that we can delete faces um, since I haven't gone over that. Um, so we'll just make a sphere here. And what we could do, of course, is to grab all of the top detail information on this sphere there and invert it by scaling through itself like that, and then just push it down into itself. Probably want to scoot it in like that. Um, but that's not really going to be necessary most of the time. Um, so if you want to have a simple shell, like the, the shell of half a bowl, um, you can go into face mode, grab the faces which you would like to destroy. Okay, And in this case, you don't need to go to a menu to destroy faces. You can just hit delete or backspace for faces and that is safe okay because they are the whole piece of geometry and there we've got a little inverted dish um, or even if this was embellishment like something that was going to sit into the side of something else cutting off those faces that we'll never see is an efficient move and probably a smart thing to do okay so three objects on a theme uh, modeled using these techniques as detailed as you can manage but make sure that they generally resemble a polygon primitive